Hello there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. Welcome back to part three of the Traveller's Ephemera Pack. I'm going to talk to you now about the inside and how we go about decorating this. Now again, a couple of things. Uh, you could actually decorate this back part um, before you actually stick the pockets in place, but you can also decorate them after we've stuck the pockets in place, so it's it's a bit neither here nor there and um, what you would do is you would make the measurement of the actual pocket itself because you want to sit it inside of the pocket and it doesn't matter to what depth you do it so long as you do it so that it's it's slightly deeper than the pocket but it doesn't have to be the full length so that it would just sit inside so just as an example this is a piece that I've cut for a pocket and then this will then sit inside of there and you would glue that in there all right and then obviously then you would decorate your pocket now again you will need to check your own measurements as to what size you need to cut yours to mine measures this inside pocket i'm going to cut my mat to six and a half inch by four and three eighths inch and then this back pocket, the inside back pocket, measures six and three quarter inches wide by four and three eighths inches deep. So I'm actually going to leave my backs empty. I'm not going to decorate them. I'm going to leave them plain. And I'm just going to decorate these front pockets here. All right, so I'm not decorating them because I just feel that by the time I've stuffed everything else in, you, you won't be able to see any of these papers anyway. One of the advantages of decorating this back piece is that it helps to give the cover itself some more support again, if you so wish. But in terms of decoration, it doesn't make any difference. So you could cut two pieces the same size as these pocket pieces and then glue them onto that back edge so as I've already shown you that one would sit in there and you would slide it down and then that one would fit in there and you would slide it down if you wanted to decorate the backs and you again you would make sure that they were lined up across this top edge so as I say I'm just going to glue these into position so I've used the patterned background paper and I've inked up all the edges now you could attach these as a pocket again so it's a pocket on top of a pocket but one of the disadvantages of keep on making pockets is that you've got to fill your pockets with stuff and then you end up with too much stuff inside your pockets that it then won't close very easily now if you did want to make this into a pocket you would just place glue around the three sides and just adhere it to this pocket front but as i say you've then got a pocket there a pocket there and then we're adding pockets on the front and it just gets to a point where it's like how many pockets can i add and how much can i actually put in them all so I will leave that one up to you whether you want to make them into a pocket or not but I'm just attaching them as mats onto those pocket fronts and again I'm just going to make sure that they're lined up across that top edge because the other advantage of just doing it flat and not having it as a pocket is it means that I can attach some paper clips onto the main pocket piece itself. Now the other pieces that I've already cut out as well are the spine pieces. So there's the spine here on the outside but also on the inside and there's a spine here on the end and there's an outside and an inside and I've already cut those as well and I cut those to five eighths of an inch wide by six and three quarter inches deep so that they will sit there so we'll glue those in place if you can hear a slight humming in the background I've got my fan on 
because it's going to be a hot day here in the UK. And, uh, I don't deal with the heat very well for my breathing problem. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the one on the back side. But again, you will need to make your own measurements or you may need to make your own measurements to know what width you would like them to be. And again, just make sure that they're all lined up. And I'll do this one on the outside. Make sure that you don't butt it up that you have got that little bit of a gap where the fold lines are so that they can fold nice and easily and then I'm going to put this one on this end And that is basically the ephemera folder, all decorated and sorted. What you do with it after this point is entirely up to you. How you want to embellish it, how you want to add extra pockets and things. I'm now going to show you what I did in the original version, but as I say, it's entirely up to you how you go about doing it. So on this backside pocket on the inside, I actually added two um, glassine bags and these glassine bags measure get my ruler to work two and seven eighths wide and from the top to the bottom four and a half inches long so I'm going to add those two on there now as you can see they actually extend just slightly beyond the pocket so where there is this little lip bit here I'm actually going to trim all of that off and I'm not going to leave a lip on it at all if you want to get your circle punch and actually punch out a, a little semicircle so it acts as a thumb hole then you can do and again it's up to you whether you want to stick the seam sides to the pocket and have it blank on the front or whether you want it to look more like um, a, a made pocket um, and stick the unseamed side to the back of the pocket itself I'm going to spin it round and have the seams in contact with the pocket because I want to decorate the front up with one of the images from the kit now this is another version of if you just glued it round the three sides then this would also act as a pocket but if you've done this one as an extra pocket, you've got your pocket here and then you've got two pockets there. There's, as I say, there's only so much you can actually fit in these things before you start to go, ooh, heck, I can't get any more in there. So let me just check my spacing. Yeah, so about there. So I've left about, ooh, three about half an inch there and I've left about an eighth of an inch at the bottom and about a quarter of an inch at the top and I'm going to trim this one off and you can use coffee dyed glassine bags they don't have to be left just plain but seeing as I'm putting ooh, bug go away bug um seeing as I'm going to be putting images on the front I'm not too worried 
about them just being plain and not coffee dyed. So again, I'm just checking on all the borders, make sure that they're nice and even. And then, as I say, I would cut out one of the little girl images and you might need to trim them down to size for them to fit on the front of those glassine bags. You could even fussy cut around them and just position them on the front of the bags. Now, the other pockets that I added were the Tim Holtz slotted pockets and this is the die itself. So it's the, um, what is the name of it? Oh, there's the number 662697 it doesn't have the actual name it doesn't on that uh, stitched slots is what it's called okay so it's the Tim Holtz stitched slots <laughs> that's difficult to say if you've had a couple of gins and what I did was I used the um, plainer version of the background paper, but I positioned the die in such a way that this area down here picks up the darker part, so the outer edge. And I did the same on this one as well, so that it sort of gives it that um, vintage look about it. And then I'm just going to place glue around three sides on this. and just a very thin line of glue around all three sides and leaving this top edge open. Again, just check the positioning of them a little bit further across. So I'll almost sit there. Again, around the three sides. And that will sit on there. And then you can start adding things from the top all the way down the slots and then I'll show you my original version in a moment but I cut out one of the um, again one of the pictures of the girls and I used one of my punches to just cut out the shape so that's the inside now ready to actually utilize so I'm going to come to decorating the front part so I cut out one of the blank pages and I cut out the smaller one and I printed it on white but I actually wished I'd printed it on cream now but because of this all being cream and I might actually even go and do that rather than sticking on the white but you need to position it in such a way that when this closes it doesn't encroach too much on this area all right so what I did with mine was rather than opening up the flap and then decorating it I actually closed the flap up and then positioned it now I put it at a jaunty angle so that this corner is just peeping over the edge of the background paper and this corner is just peeping over the edge of the background paper and then the little girl that I used was this one and again I printed her out onto the white and I wished I'd printed her on the cream and then what I would do was I would place glue around the three sides now I'm going to glue this on there because I can use this on another project but I'm not actually going to glue it to this particular project because as I say I think it looks better printed on a cream cardstock rather than a white but at least it shows you A, how it's made and B, how it can look better with the cream. So I will sit that on top. Just take it off there a minute so I can 
maneuver it. And then I would place glue all over the back of that. Whilst the flap is shut, I would position it just at that slight jaunty angle there and then that would glue onto there. For this part here on the original, what I did was I actually used a piece of cheesecloth which I roughly cut out and I actually used some um, eyelash trim but in this one I've actually got this little crochet doily so I'm going to stick the crochet doily on top of the cheesecloth. The other thing I'm then going to use is some of this lace trim and the reason why I'm using it is it's got it's got this dangly bit at the bottom look so it, it gives it a bit of a swing and so I'm going to cut off that section there so that I've now got those dangles but I'm actually going to cut this all off at the top here because it's just too bulky Ooh. And I also punched out a two inch um, scalloped circle um, out of the patent paper and I inked up the edges. So this piece here I'm going to stick onto the back of the scallop circle. So that those dangly bits of the lace are just hanging beneath it. And then I'm going to put glue all over the back of the scallop circle and I'm going to sit it on top of this little piece of crochet so we'll stick that in the centre there And then on the back of the cheesecloth, I'm going to put some glue on the back of there. And I'm holding the glue in midair. I'm not letting it be in contact with the cheesecloth because it will just keep catching on it. So you end up with some great big dollops of glue. And then that will sit on there. And then from Hobbycraft, so for those of you in the UK, I use these pink flowers. And this was the flower that I used. And I added some leaves as well. So that one would sit there. Hmm, might even do the two leaves coming off like that and then the flower on there yeah we'll do that there's one there's the second one and then for the flower. Now one of the things I would say is if you buy these and use this one with the beads on it, I would say to you just be careful because those beads can keep falling off. And so what I did with mine was once I'd got it into position and I'd finished doing what I was going to do for it for the day, I actually put glossy accents all over those beads. I tried not to extend it onto the flower itself, but just put it on top of the beads and I just then let it dry overnight so that the beads were then all going to be held in place with the glossy accents. Now the other thing that I did, and again I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to use this white background, I'm going to use the cream was I then used some of the smaller flowers
and just positioned them there and then added some more leaves onto the flowers themselves and that's all I did for decorating the front of it and then I made a tag to actually go in this top part of the pocket here and that's all there is to it really we're all done dusted and sorted so I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to show you the completed one again so that you can have a look and just give it some thought about how you might want to finish your own off so this was the original one and you can see here look I printed it on the cream and it just blends so much nicer than it being on the white I just feel that the white is a touch too stark so here as you can see I added the tag in the top I also added a piece of lace underneath this background piece and I used some much tinier leaves than were in the pack from Hobbycraft because I just thought it gave it a slightly more delicate look now the other thing that I did as well was I actually drew on some faux stitching I find it quite therapeutic and then um, so if you, I don't know whether you'll be able to see on this because uh, the sun is very bright again and I've had to draw the curtains but I actually have put the glossy accents on those beads there and here I use the eyelash trim where I haven't done on the other version and then if we turn it over to the back so with some of the scrap paper that I'd got left over I just cut a thin strip to act as almost like a piece of washi tape and just attached it across the bottom part of the pocket did some faux stitching around again, added a flower and some leaves, fussy cut the little girl out and stuck her on top. And then as you can see, I added, let's show you a close up. So I punched out um, from some of the little girls, some of the images, and I actually added some brads onto them as well before I actually glued them in position on top of the Tim Holtz pockets. And then the little girls on the glassine pockets, I just glued them on and added a couple of um, faux stitched buttons. And then I just filled it up with all the bits and pieces that I felt were necessary to make it into an ephemera pack. Now the other thing that I want to show you very quickly is that I have a tutorial on how we made these little glassine booklets and I will put the link in the description box down below if you want to have a go at making your own. Uh, we did a version that was covered with fabric rather than with a paper napkin um, but I'll show you how to, to do that and, and add pockets and things to it as well. So that's um, another little added extra video if you want to go and have a, a look at that. But that is basically it. And I just think that that's an absolute doddle and uh, makes a beautiful gift to give to somebody. So all that's left to say is thank you very much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you all again soon. Ta-ra for now, my lovelies.